The following is a special presentation, Brave Conquers Fear. Hey. Perspectives on the way that we view life. Everyone faces challenges. Get emotional. They come in different circumstances and seasons of life. Thank you. But the desire to overcome connects us all. I said it and I did it. A marker of being okay. When bravery delivers a dream that felt too far out of reach. Still so surreal. <laughs> when caring inspires community to fight for a better future. Tea. When beautiful gifts so proud of you. come from situations that felt hopeless. He wanted to honor his a heavenly family. We are inspired because the power of hope oh, that's so awesome. and courage is contagious. I did a good job today. These are the stories of Brave Conquers Fear. Thanks for joining us. I'm Cheryl Preheim. We begin our celebration of Brave Conquers Fear with one woman's journey to stay connected. For years, Susan McCaskill drew energy and purpose from the young smiles that greeted her every morning. When that ended, she found a creative way to stay close and give back. It's easy to take our routines for granted until they change and we have to change too. I got real depressed. It's what brought Susan McCaskill to settle in behind her sewing machine. It took me to a peaceful space. She was never a seamstress. I never knew how to sew. Ms. McCaskill was more comfortable with big machinery and her seat behind the wheel of her school bus. I have been driving for 24 years. When poor health forced an early retirement, she needed a new routine to fill days that suddenly felt so empty. Because it take about 30 hours to get one good quilt. This is a family quilt. She made gifts for her family. Everybody can sign a square. Immediate and extended. Ethan was in first grade. You yeah. see the kids on the bus as part of your family. I told my parents when they step on the first step, those my babies. The connection with the kids on her bus didn't end with her route. Like Libby, I got about 500 children. It's why her favorite book is always within reach. I get emotional. And they was little, little. She just got in college. Pictures, letters, thank yous. I look at these pictures a lot. Keeping in touch with families over the years, like the Zoofies. Libby is my girl. She was my bus driver from kindergarten to fifth grade. She cared like we were her kids. Say goodbye. As Libby packed for the University of Michigan, she got an unexpected care package. A quilt a pillowcase, and my name. Made with love from Ms. McCaskill's house. It was amazing. It was a total shock. It was so sweet, especially since she took the time after all these years. Libby's friend received one too. Finishing this quilt right here. Ms. McCaskill's made dozens of others, all personalized. <laughs> Sending along care and support as her babies are off to change their routines too. Yeah, I'm gonna be Gone. in the tundra. <laughs> you even just throw it across your chair and peep at it sometime. Ms. McCaskill made that. <laughs> it means a lot to you. Yes, it do. I love my big babies and my bus babies. I can't thank her enough for all the love that she's shown me and all the care. Ethan was my first. The pattern yeah. of Ms. McCaskill's days has changed. The love never will. And that love just keep stuck in my heart. Getting back to running represents getting back to life for Renee Sagrosso. Renee was 47 when she was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. Staying active was medicine for her body, her mind and soul. She hopes her story shows others what's possible. I get up, I walk every day, every morning. I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I'm able to walk. Life has taught Renee Sagrosso not to focus on a finish line, just to take things moment by moment. It is the most important thing I can do to have what I call a mentally successful day. <laughs> She's been fighting stage four colon cancer. This is me beginning chemo. Is this really happening to me? Is this ha like... How is this happening? And Renee went through a lot of it alone in the height of the pandemic. This is the view from Northside Hospital. No visitors, only sending videos to family. Everyone's dying on iPads. Five surgeries, 12 rounds of chemo. Thank you, guys. 
I just couldn't wait to get out of that hospital and get in my bed with my dogs. Back to all her loves and where Renee loves to be. Hi, guy. Outside. I do remember after my first three surgeries, the first time I walked half a mile. Um, I, I sat down and cried because, you know, I had been a five mile a day easily girl. She's back doing five miles again. <laughs> Walking is my number one medicine for dealing with cancer. And not just walking, Renee runs. The last time I ran it was in 2017. It was an amazing experience. She runs this year's road race with a new perspective and clarity alongside her daughter with the rest of the family cheering them on. Like a marker of being okay. You know, if I can run the peach tree, I'm okay. Running is really the only response that I can think of to release that, um, that gratitude, that hopefulness. You're a good man. Living in the joy of the health that I have today Come here. is a blessing. Sometimes the hardest situations bring the experiences you draw from to encourage others. We see that in these next two Brave Conquers Fear stories. A fight for life shows what's possible and years in foster care compels a young woman to help. We can do a couple takes on it, no problem. What's happening in Brittany Sherell's living room felt like an impossibility. Every other day, another eviction letter is being sent. It represents a happy ending that felt so out of reach. Because not once did I get a hug. But Brittany what? never stopped pursuing it. I'm just dragging a bag with dreams, which is living in Georgia or having a family of my own. She was 10 when life came crashing down. We survive. That, that's all we could do was survive. Her mom battled addiction. Police arrested her for shoplifting, so they split the kids up in different foster homes. The storm came in raging. Brittany carried around a garbage bag with the few things that she owned. So much baggage and, and pain. Stacks of paper document years of trauma, moving from house to house, separated from her twin. We all fell apart. Then finally, a foster home where she felt supported. She went on to college and she got a job. She wrote about her experience. This book was a dream. I said it and I did it. Her vision board is full of new goals to help other foster kids. It's why there are piles of bags in her garage, part of a nonprofit she's building called Suitcase and a Dream. <gasps> Brittany's new home with her new husband is now a place of possibilities. Am I proof? Like, you can dream, because my dreams are still happening every day. It's an amazing story. Some experiences just bond you for life. That's true for Hope Mavridis and Dr. Davis. I literally cried. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy for you. Still so surreal. For so long, each visit to Piedmont Fayette Hospital was hard and scary. She's one of my miracles that's like, oh, thank God. This time, Hope is back celebrating what long felt impossible. She was diagnosed with stage three cancer in both an ovary and her uterus. Treatment had to be fast and aggressive. The final step was going to be a hysterectomy, a surgery that would end Hope's dream of ever being pregnant. The day before she called me right here in my office and she was like, you know, I've been thinking about it and I feel like the Lord is telling me I shouldn't do it. Is there any other way we can treat it? Hope asked Dr. Davis if she'd consider leaving the organs needed to carry a baby. Dr. Davis couldn't make a promise other than she would try. She knew how much Hope wanted to be a mom. I woke up from surgery, and the first thing that I asked the nurse, I was like, is everything gone? And she was like, no. She was like, Dr. Davis left your uterus and your ovary. I was like, Dr. Davis had the faith to treat me the best that she could and give me a chance. Tears of gratefulness. Hope's baby is due in November. I have a love for Dr. Davis that I can't explain because she is an angel. <laughs> so I'm happy that, you know, Hope had a chance and here she is able to be a mom. It's amazing what can happen when a small group of people is determined to make a big impact. A little boy and his family say their lives are changed because of it. Long before Brax Pope could play or talk, hey, see you later. He was teaching his parents a lot. Hey, wait. Yeah. New perspectives on the way that we live and the way that we view life. Brax is nonstop, like any happy two year old, 
full of personality. <laughs> He's such a joy to be around. You would have no idea he had CF. Cystic fibrosis, a rare disease that attacks the lungs. Just want your little baby to have a bright future. <laughs> A vest shakes Brax to clear mucus from his lungs, part of his daily routine, along with a lot of pills. That doesn't hold him back. It's medicine that did not exist a few years ago. There's so much hope. They're working towards a cure. That hope is the result of work happening in Atlanta decades before Brax was born. We know that that's the difference in, in saving his life. And that's all possible because of people like the Choates. They started Choate Construction in Atlanta in 1989, the same year they committed to raise money for CF research in honor of Leanne, Emily Choate Bridges' best friend. I see Leanne in every CF patient. Researchers discovered a life-changing treatment, a pill, shortly after Leanne passed away. Her spirit lives on in these new CF patients. The new medicine helps Brax and 90% of CF patients. The goal is to help all. His parents hope one day Brax will live in a world with a cure. Thank you, Brax. When Brave Conquer's Fear continues, a celebration made sweeter by the hard times they faced together. I fell asleep at the wheel. A young man wasn't expected to survive, let alone find himself among the best in the world. There were times Garrett Jaros wasn't sure how he'd go on. Then a new goal helped him face every challenge with a positive mindset. Garrett says the darkest time led him to the purest joy he's ever felt. <laughs> when life comes full circle in ways that felt impossible at times, yeah. it's amazing to take it all in. Thank you. That's what Garrett Jaros is feeling right about now. Yes. He has his Paralympic medal in hand. Heck yeah. Back where it all began. This man right here Whatever. got me started in snowboarding. The place he saw a poster on the wall that made him believe good things were possible possible after all. I couldn't even stand. I was at my lowest and I felt like there was a wall in front of me that I couldn't see past. Two weeks after he got his driver's license, Garrett was in a crash that nearly killed him. I fell asleep at the wheel and hit a tree going about 70 miles an hour. The life flight nurse said he didn't think I was going to make it. Surgeons amputated one of his legs below the knee. I've never felt so low in life. It was just like the darkness was closing in. He came to Children's Healthcare of Atlanta and Richard Welling for a prosthetic, physical therapy, and hope. I saw the poster on the wall of the Paralympic athletes and I was like, you know what, Richard, I'm going to be on your wall one day. <laughs> he didn't have a leg yet. He wasn't even allowed to stand, but he already had a goal in mind at that point. Richard helped Garrett make connections to the adaptive snowboarding world, the sport he chose. Garrett Giros. A few years later, Garrett was shining at the Paralympics. I podiumed at my first games. I threw my arms in the air and screamed at the top of my lungs. I'm like, I did it. An amazing time to see someone that you've seen at the lowest reach such a high point. A lot of people ask if I can go back and change it, would you? And I'm like, I wouldn't change a thing. This has made my life so much better. So for people, whatever they might be struggling to overcome, what would you want them to know? A situation at first can look really bad. It felt like my life was destroyed, but just because something is bad in the moment doesn't mean it's going to be bad forever. You can make something so great and just look at life totally different. Garrett feels the gift in it. Ooh, right here. So he brought a gift in return. That's awesome. Yes. Look at this. Something to give the next person who needs hope. Whoa. Yeah. A poster to add to the Where wall. This guy's going to be hanging. Oh, that's so awesome. Just man. like he said he would. Thank you for everything, Richard. A full circle moment uh, that oh. means a lot to them both. Oh, you joyful, man. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. When Brave Conquer's Fear continues, is a safe place to talk. Big about. dreams. Big impacts oh my God. in small packages. This is my command center. Now to the stories of two young people courageously making a difference. Caden is 11 and empowering kids to understand money and create opportunities. 
Takari is 10. He's sharing compassion, understanding, and solutions for mental health challenges. I love wrestling. For everything that makes Caden Harris like many 11-year-olds, I have my Xbox. There's a long list of what sets him apart. This is my command center. He's a CEO, entrepreneur, and author. His latest idea? He said, listen, Dad, I have an idea. I would like to buy a bus and convert it into a mobile financial learning center. So that kids all over can learn about financial literacy. In his safe, he keeps the fortune cookie that confirmed it. Something on four wheels will soon be a fun investment for you. What yes. are the odds of that? <laughs> Two weeks after that, he actually purchased the bus cash on his own with the profits from his business. Then it was time to renovate. The interior was trashed out. The bus just got done. Even Caden hasn't seen it yet. Oh my God. His dad, here. Sean, gave us a first look. Uh, we're gonna have the ATM machine right here. There is an interactive bank and stock market. <laughs> Opening oh market. And a stocked store. When Caden comes on this bus, he's gonna lose his mind. But it's all about helping others. Once they learn economics at an early age, they can make lifelong powerful decisions. Empowering kids all over the state. And I feel like this could really help. For everything a new year and fifth grade brings. I was excited for the school year. Takari Tatum has been most excited for the opportunity to see and help others. School is a a big outlet for me to give out rubber band bracelets. He's been busy passing them out around Varner Elementary. I thought it was just going to be a small project. What started as a class community service project last year grew to a personal mission. I'm fighting mental illness one bracelet at a time. Hi, Takari, how are you? I'm good. This is a rubber band bracelet, and yes. anytime you feel stressed or anxious, you just snap it. This is a snap it bracelet. <laughs> My stress reliever. Thank you. Can I have a hug? Takari started making the bracelets. Mm, I'm so proud of you. Because of everything he and his family were going through. My aunt, she died of COVID, and that really stressed me out. My grandpa, he died too. So he said, like, he wanted to honor his uh, heavenly family. It's helped his grandma through her loss, too. Making the bracelets and snapping it helped me in my mental journey. Takari now has a website, is partnering with the National Alliance on Mental Illness, and reaching people all over the country. Remember, snap it and breathe. The story behind a message resonating around the country. I did a good job today. Proving what's possible for people with special needs. The Moore family faced their fear about their daughter's future, and now they're living a dream they never imagined. It's helping inspire people all over the country and supporting the special needs community. To fully appreciate potential, you have to look beyond what most people see. That's true for this warehouse and all that's happening inside. We have a lot of stuff. It's mostly shirts. The shirts, yeah! This success story is less about a mountain of product and the constant busyness to fill orders. It's much more about a feeling. The energy is vibrant every day. Watch this! And the deeper reason that brings Jordan Moore, her family, and friends here every day. As soon as Jordan walks in, she livens the place up. Yes. <laughs> Jordan loves the shirt shop. This this much. You love it that this much. This much. She's the reason it exists. It is what at one point we dreamt of, but thought the goal seems so far out of reach. Something big and beautiful born from uncertainty and worry. She struggled to do anything independently. Jordan has autism. I did pee. Her parents knew the end of high school would be the end of important support and purpose. There are very few opportunities for individuals with disabilities once they become adults. And we knew that, and that's what was keeping us up at night. So they came up with their own plan, a t-shirt design. We started in our basement. Our goal was to sell 40 shirts. They'd teach Jordan life skills and job skills, folding, sorting, packaging. She has come so far. You giving me a present? We first visited four months in, and a movement was already taking off around the country. A message of kindness and believing in someone's potential. I did a good job today. Four years later. Super back. I'm so excited. 
it's still growing. It's crazy how this just started as a little idea in our basement. Now a 6,000 foot warehouse that soon will double. It's, it's been a blessing, truly a blessing. It's changed every aspect of her life. The shirt shop has given her a job. Her confidence has went up. She and she is just happy. It's fun. We like the short shop. It's so far beyond any potential and possibilities they could see <laughs> for Jordan so fun. and others. Have a good day, you guys. Thank you for joining us for Brave Conquer's Fear, profiles and courage and connection that bring us together.